what's going on guys it's brian and jack with soap men's comics and we are here to talk about ooze comic book market trends for the week aren't we jack absolutely three trends moving upward three trends moving downward this is of course three up three down on the simple men's comics youtube channel that's right we're going to talk about three up starting right now way we are talking about xo man war yeah, now I, I will tell you, Brian, I'm excited about this, but I'm cautious. Um, and, I, and I have to tell our community um, the reasons why I feel that way. And this is coming from a very big, valiant fan. Um, Exo Man of War has doubled in value within the last week. And that comes uh, pretty much solely due to the fact that John Cena has tweeted out some panel images of an Exo Man of War comic. Um, this has caused speculation to run rampant but that we may be seeing the next development in some sort of a Sony Valiant universe. And right, it makes sense because we know that John Cena and Vin Diesel have grown into a bit of a friendship after the filming of Fast and the Furious 9. Um, you know, of course, there was the much publicized feud between The Rock and Vin Diesel and John Cena kind of got to come in and, and, and kind of be the new girlfriend, right? When you break up with your old one. And um, this could be a budgeting relationship where we could see them do more films together. So the thought is, this makes logical sense. But where I say you have to exercise caution is as wrestling fans, Brian, we are very aware of um, John Cena's Instagram habits. Um, he's actually been chastised by the World Wrestling Entertainment um, company because in the past he would put up uh, Instagram photos, no caption. He never puts a caption, um, no description. And the company felt like, well, you're leading people in the wrong direction or different direction because, you know, some of his, his imaging is random. He's put Batman pictures up before. He's put the Joker images up before. Doesn't mean he was in the running to play those characters. Um, so there may be a smoke, a smoke where there's fire sort of situation. But um, it's one that I would be cautious of. $40 right now scares me a little bit. That's the current going rate for Exo Man of War 1. I love it at 20 At 40 it makes me um, a bit nervous. Yeah, and I can't say anything about it because, as you know, I'm not a big Valiant fan. But I did love Bloodshot, so it did kind of put me on to these. And the thing also is I'm wearing glasses tonight because my allergies have been giving me hell. And then I'm sitting there going, trying to move my face because it's <laughs> clear my screen. The glare. My glasses. But either way, we're going to move into the next one on the three up portion. We're going to talk about, we talked about John Cena. Now we're going to talk about Dwayne Johnson with Black Adam. Adam. Not just because Dwayne Johnson, but he's a huge movement on why these books are kind of moving, right? Uh, oh, no, without a doubt. And it's, it's amazing, too, to think about. As wrestling fans, there was an entire WrestleMania feud based upon John Cena fighting The Rock and John Cena feeling like The Rock had sold out on wrestling for Hollywood. Now these two are both leading men in Hollywood and two of the most talked about candidates for superhero franchises. And it's long been rumored and discussed and announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be playing Black Adam in the Shazam series and that they were going to have kind of an unconventional method of releasing his character by having him have his own kind of villain centric movie first this is an imminent project for the rock furthermore there was some leaking of some of a script and even whether or not that's even really the script that they're working on now or not it brought to light some characters so you started to see um beyond the typical black adam books getting hot talking about um you know like the uh the first silver age appearance or modern appearance which is kind of the one that everybody chases rather than those golden age uh appearances which where the character is slightly different um but also like the the dc weekly book the 52 um number 12 which is the first modern isis those are the books to get the ones that are the more modern versions of black adam those dc presents type thing um i think that those are going to be in more demand than some of the like golden age stuff. But I think even that golden age, uh, the Marvel family stuff and, and alter ego seven and books like that, we'll see, we'll see spikes, but we're seeing a lot on that modern stuff that Alex Ross one in 10 incentive variant to the black Adam mini series has seen a spike. If rumors are true that we could get Superman in this movie, we are going to get Hawkman and the Hawk family. Um, I think that that, is something to keep an eye out for and going to be marketable. So I'm excited for this movie. I think it's going to be a good one. But the last one we're talking about on the three-up portion is the big news of the week. 
Edward's been talking about it. We've been championing them for a good while now. Love those people, love their publishing. And we are talking about Boom Studios, super hot right now. They just signed a first look deal with Netflix, and we're already seeing some of those books, those recent books go up there with like Once in Future, something that's killing the children. But a lot of people need to concentrate on that back catalog as well. Like Lumberjanes had, they, in like 2015, they signed a first look deal with Fox and Lumberjanes took off things. It's right around release. I still think that's one to keep an eye on. But what do you think about Boom signing a first look deal with Netflix? There's a lot of possibilities there. Incredible. And we can talk about books all day from Black Badge to Grass Kings to Bone Parish, um, you know, and some of the incredible. I think Alienated is another one that's books. really underrated. Alienated. There's books from some of the boom offshoots like Boombox. Don't forget, I was very big on a, a book called Avant Guards, um, which is actually a, a girls basketball book. Um, that I think has a lot of like movie and TV potential. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of properties like that, that I think boom has been the, the, the perfect vehicle for a first look deal. We've seen in the comic market, what just this announcement of a first look deal has done for dark horse books. And there has boom not been a single, there hasn't been a single dark horse announcement since they made their first look deal with Netflix Yet every single Dark Horse number one gets an added second look from the investment community. The reason why Boom is in the position where they are today is because of the people that they have put within this company. The structure. I really have to shout out Ross Ritchie on this because we've heard this discussed before. Why is did Boom have the 2019 they had? And we've heard a lot of finger pointing, right? I mean, certainly we got some <laughs> finger pointing in our direction. The reality of the situation is this is a company that is set up and structured to be successful in the common day market um, environment. When you have somebody like an Arun Singh, a, a marketer who is going to touch bases with retailers, he is going to communicate with the market and, and communicate what is going on with current boom initiatives. Um, that communication, I'm going to tell you from somebody in our perspective, is far different from what we see from other publishers. Um, so their team is like really, really built for this, this modern market. They're really built to be able to handle um, kind of the demands of, of today. And I'm really excited for them. And, and, and there's endless possibilities of where this can go. And we've talked about this before. Uh, there's a lot of great vehicles for film and i think boom is you mentioned brian uh before we recorded that they're gonna they're gonna look at some other vehicles as well right they have a first look deal first look deal doesn't mean it's an exclusive deal because if netflix turns down a property they can then take that property anywhere else so you can go to hulu or disney plus or um hbo you can go anywhere with it um and i i think you're gonna see boom everywhere but at the same point I think the best place you can go right now on streaming, hey man, it's, it's, it's Netflix. It's the place, it's, it's why we all know about Tiger King, right? It's why Tiger King is the sensation that it is because we all have it. And I agree with you on the backlog of titles, but I really think that those 2019 titles, them being as strong as they are, is the reason why we are where we are. That, that string of hits, I think, became undeniable to anyone in the market. So there's three up portion. We're going to shift over now to the three downward trends in the comic market community. And we are talking about Cheetah. This is that Wonder Woman villain. We were actually high on this. We had it on the up. It was also on the hot and cold portion. But Wonder Woman 1984, the news has kind of been shifted. The release has been shifted, I think, also with the whole COVID-19 stuff. Not hearing much news about it right now. So how are these books performing? Yeah, they're down. Um, and we were very high. I'm still very high on this character. This is a great buying opportunity right now. And that's the beauty of this, this side of three up, three down, right? There's always some great buying opportunities that are presented on the down cycle. Um, that, that second volume, Wonder Woman, um, number seven, and of course, the origin of number nine, um, those are in demand, but they are back down to selling at that like $10 level for seven, um, maybe 15. Um, and we're talking raw, of course. And, and that is far below the 40 to 50 that we've seen. So this fits into that category of book, Brian, that we've been talking about frequently on the channel where I feel like you could buy it now. And even if it just gets back to, say, it's trailer number one price, you're already 
making a, a very good ROI. Um, and if you didn't own this for your collection, now is a really great time to buy this because I really believe that Kristen Wiig is going to do very well as this character. Then the next one we're going to move over to on the downward trends this week is Walking Dead. Seems these books have been kind of dead for a while, but I will say with the, the this people that stayed true to the show said that this past season was like one of the best ones they've ever seen. And they introduced some of those characters in those later issues. So within the Skybound fan club or the Walking Dead fan club, they're still hot on this book. But overall, at a macro level, yeah, Walking Dead's kind of down still. Yeah, um, and I would agree with this uh, stat assessment of the show. I think that the show has improved. It's not the show that it used to be. Um, I'm a comic book purist, so once the show started taking like major liberties away from the book, it, it, it lost me a bit. I'm going to tell you why I've got it on this side of the list. We could have had Walking Dead on this side of the list any week we want, reasonably. But I really think that the last nail went in the coffin of Walking Dead as far as secondary market valuation of comics. I still think it'll be a popular TV show. I still think the spinoffs will be popular. I still think it's one of the greatest reads of a comic book of all time all time um but i'll tell you you know what that final nail was brian it is that first appearance that we just had princess this was a big moment right uh, a first appearing character character on the cover a cover yeah, it didn't a move the needle that, that much did it <laughs> no the book made um you know most of your favorite youtube channels uh top 10 lists but it did it based on volume it didn't do it based on like really any sort of secondary market. I mean, you're talking about a book that jumped from like five to 10 to $12, maybe 15. Um, and you may be saying, but Jack, you know, usually you're real happy with that type of return. And I get that. But the reality of the situation is coming from the perspective that Brian and I come from where we've watched this walking dead craze since season one. Um, th that is not indicative of what life was like for us um, several years ago when a new character would debut. Now, part of it's indicative of the modern day print run, right? The print run on Walking Dead at 171 is much higher than some of the early key issues. There's zero doubt about that. And that does play a major role. But I think just the reality is the comic book market has moved on. Now that the series is over, now that um, there were several flops between, say, Megan, and Princess, I think uh, Alpha not really being what people had hoped, I think that really has just murdered the opportunity uh, for the comic market. Now, we're on issue 171. I don't know that there's too much that's going to play out between issue 171 and the, when the series ended in 193. Then the last one we're talking about in the three down this week is those blank variants. We talked about these before. And I think a big reason why these are down right now is because there's no conventions to take them to to get right. sketched and done, right? Yeah, this is a supply and demand situation. So we've tried to talk to you guys about blank variants on the channel. So early on, when we would talk about it, we get kind of laughed at, right? But one of the things that's kind of niche for Brian and I is we like to give you guys some different angles, some different things to look at, some different plays. And one of which is the seasonal popularity of blanks. Before convention season, they're readily available. They're cheap. Midway through to the end of convention series, you cannot get your hands on them. And they start to see secondary market values rise on ones where the supply is drying up. So what I'm seeing consistently is I'm seeing eBay lots of like 10 to 20 blanks, $3 average. Yeah, I'm see exactly. I'm seeing them on uh, Instagram, uh, you know, Larry Doherty. Larry's Comics is regularly advertising that he claims to have more blanks than any dealer out there and will put together package deals for uh, blanks as low as like $3 a book. It, this is one of those things where if you can be so forward thinking that you can think to 2021. Shelf until next con season. You will be more prepared and you'll be ready. Um, your buy-in now will be lower than you would have had yeah, the ROI is just there. And not to mention, if you're into getting sketches done, um, you can never have enough of a supply of these blanks because you always want, you don't want to go get a blank when you want to sketch. You want to have it because you just never know when those opportunities are going to pop up. Also, just because con season is not happening, a lot of your favorite artists or even the smaller artists, not your big A plus artists, but all your artists 
are on Facebook right now. They're trying to make some money. So you can get some of those blanks and then they're doing blank commissions and stuff like that sketches. And so check out your artists, get in touch with them on Instagram, Twitter. If you have some of those blank variants, see if you can send yep. those to them and get the sketch done and then mail it back. Um, I've seen people doing it. So if that's something that interests you, it's something to look into, but there it is guys. That's the three up three down for this week. Let us know in the comments. What do you think's hot? What do you think is cold? What do you think of our list? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? We're always love to hear the comments from you guys. Love you guys for viewing this. If you're new here, consider subscribing, click that bell notification. That way you get notified of every future video that drops on this channel. That being said, guys, this is Jack Brown with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.